Hello and welcome to the Magical Midlife Podcast, where you get a refreshing, uplifting and optimistic perspective on life in your 40s and 50s. I'm your host, Lindsay DeSwart, and I'm delighted that you've joined us here today. So let's jump right in. Hi, welcome to today's show. Today's guest is Jolanta Mitrait, and she owns a company called JM Control, and she's a really inspirational, wonderful lady. So go and grab a cup of tea. I really hope you enjoy the show today. And if you've got any dreams that you want to achieve, you need to listen to the episode today. So today I am absolutely delighted to have my new friend, Jalanta, on our podcast today. And she has got some fantastically entertaining tales and stories about her life and where she is today. So I would love to welcome you to the show, Jalanta. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, dear Lindsay. I'm here. Thank you so much for invitation to be a part of your podcast today. Oh, you're so welcome. So this is the second time that we've spoken um, online, isn't it? Because I came onto your Instagram and we did a live together, which was super fun. And so here we are now. So everybody that's listening to the podcast can hear all about you, which I'm so excited to dig into. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. I'm still excited from our last conversation on my Instagram live. It was best conversation ever and your energy Lindsay really uh, pulled me up like a racket you know I was all evening so happy and positive thank you so much oh fantastic thank you right so let's find out a little bit about your background um, and so that we understand you and your journey because as I say I know some of the lovely stories that you've told me but I don't really know your foundation. So tell us about your foundation, Jalanta. My foundation, my foundation. I am originally from Lithuania. I have been born in Lithuania in a small city, wonderful city named Palanga. So I grew up there in Palanga and I finished my school, whatever, you know, and my first marriage was in Palanga, (laughs) my second marriage. So I lived in Lithuania till 40 years. After 40 years, I changed my life completely. I moved to Vienna. So for the moment, I live in Vienna and I love to live in Vienna. But my life till 40 years, I was spending in Lithuania. But in the meantime, I used to travel around the world a lot. So I can't say that I really was in Lithuania. I, my base life was in Lithuania, but I was traveling so much around as I was a former dancer. Oh, okay. So tell us more about that. What sort of, I mean, ballet dancing or? Uh, You know, I always like to see people ask me, since when you were dancing? I said, uh, since I remember myself, you know, I think I I was, I born a dancer, you know. So I was dancing modern dance, but of course I did ballet, I did national dancing, you know, but then when I was 20 and Lithuania, went out of Soviet Union, you know, 1990. Yeah. So all the, the, all the world was opening for us. So I got the first contract then, and we went to Norway, the first contract. And since that, I was traveling around the world for 10 years, all around the world. Oh, my goodness. So what sort of things were you doing? I mean, performing in all around the world? Yes, we were performing a show. We were dancing a modern dance. We were, uh, our group was always changing from five to seven people. And uh, yeah, it was beautiful. I was always on the stage. We went to Norway, Caribbean, Japan, uh, Lebanon, Emirates, uh, Lithuania, Russia. Oh my God, (laughs) it was never the end. It was wonderful life for 10 years. From my 20s to 30s, I was a dancing woman. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Fantastic. And then so how was it for you coming back to Lithuania? Yes, I, you know, you can't dance all the life. You know, I wanted to to settle down my life. So I went back to Lithuania. I already had my daughter when I was 20. You know, I got married very early. I was 20 when I got first time married and my daughter was in Lithuania my husband was in Lithuania so I had to finish one day 
So that's how I just went back to Lithuania and I opened my first aerobic club for ladies. It was fantastic. It was a big dream of mine to have an aerobic club for ladies. And I was the first lady in my city which created this aerobic club, you know, and this aerobic club was only for ladies. I was going on for 12 years and it was fantastic, really. I love it. I love it what I was doing. And this was uh, ended when I moved to Vienna. After 12 years, having the aerobic club was everything cut it, you know, and many things happened during this time. So many things happened. You know? Okay, you can't leave it like that. You have to tell us what sort of things happened. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, you know, I... I I, I got first divorce, then I got uh, second time married, I got my second daughter from the second marriage, you know, then I already got a second time divorce, and I went to a very big depression, you know, and I had to heal from my depression, it took me two years, Okay. and uh, when I really felt good one day, when uh, I felt completely healed, my life changed, and my life brought me to Vienna, where I started my life from zero. I brought my daughter with me. She was six. So I took her, I took two luggages, and we came to Vienna to start new life. Oh, my goodness. And why Vienna? Why did you choose Vienna? I think Vienna chose me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is an interesting story. I was never planning to leave Lithuania. Never. I said I will never go out from my country. But sometimes things changing so fast and unexpected that you just, you know, you just have to agree. And I wanted to learn Pilates. I was right. uh, doing aerobic for 12 years and it was too intensive for me. So I started to search where I can um, learn Pilates, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I just found it a beautiful, wonderful school mm -hmm. in the uh, U.S., but it was too much. I had my daughter. She was only six years, so I couldn't go to U.S. Yeah. Then I found it the same school in Vienna, in Austria, you know. So I came here. I talked if they would take me, if I can stay here, I can work, I can live here. And they said, yes, without any doubt, we want you to come. We want you to stay. We give you a job. And then in 15 minutes, I just took the decision. <gasps> we are moving to Vienna in 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's amazing. And so you've raised your daughter in Vienna. Yes, from six. Now she's 20. She raised in Vienna. She started school in Vienna. You know, she was six. She started first year in school. And uh, we were quite good here. It was very difficult, I have to say. It was yeah. very difficult because I came alone with my daughter, a new city, a new language, and everything new, a lot of work, a lot of, a lot of studies. She is small. But somehow I felt so strong and deep power inside of me you know that something was pushing me to go forward right and uh, it was very hard it was not easy but in the meantime the doors were, were opening so easy for me you know whatever I was turning whatever I was trying to do it was always opening all doors opening I think I was just very ambitious and I had my plans I wanted to build up my life and then I had a very, very difficult moment, you know, because sometimes I wanted to go back to my home. Mm -hmm. I was completely alone here. And I thought, what have I, what have I do? What do I have to do? How I have to motivate myself? Mm -hmm. And then I was finding some sentence, what I was telling to myself. Mm -hmm. If I step back at least one step, if I look back, I'm going to fall very, very deep to the hole. So there is no way I cannot step back. There is a hell behind me, you know. Yes. I just can move forward, finish. There is no even way to think to go back. So that's the power inside of me, how I was motivating myself. And I just wow. moved forward. Okay. So can you remember exactly? I mean, that was the was that the particular expression or the particular sentence that you just said, I can't go back because there's hell behind me. Yes, yes, exactly. This was my, what I was repeating, because 
I swear sometimes it was so hard. I, I, it was very hard. I was asking myself, God, why you brought me here to this city, to a new country, completely alone, me with my daughter, where I don't have anyone who can help me. Yeah. And I was asking to myself this question for many years. Mm -hmm. Today I have the answer. <laughs> <laughs> but at that time and then you know I was thinking to go back not to go back one year passed three years passed yeah. five years passed I was still thinking to go back but after five years I was always repeating no you will not go back there is a hell you cannot go back <laughs> your future is here just keep moving keep moving keep moving never give up you know that's that's the words I was telling to myself I swear and so after your, so how did you meet your second husband in Vienna or was he before Vienna? No, it was before Vienna. Ah, I met okay. my husband, yes, when I was in Lithuania. We got married, we got divorced. And so this happened in this time when I settled down in, in Lithuania. It was like from my 30s to my 40s. And when I came to Vienna, I was completely alone. No husband, just me and my daughter. Goodness. So how did you start to build the blocks of your new life? Because you said, I mean, they said there, there's education. They said you can have a job. But it's so much more than that, isn't it? You know, you have to find your life as well. Oh, my life was my daughter and my job. I swear. This was my life. I had no my life, you know, because when I came to Vienna, I had to build up my life here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I needed to work a lot. And uh, I thought, I have to work. I have to take care about my daughter. I can't do anything now because it took so much time to learn Pilates. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the meantime, I had to start to work because I needed money, you know. Mm -hmm. And the rest time was for my daughter because I wanted to teach my daughter to read and to write in Lithuanian language. Mm -hmm. So I was doing like kind of lessons for her. Mm -hmm. So all this time I was giving to my work and to my daughter. But when my daughter grew up a little bit, she was 10. I thought maybe I can look for a boyfriend, maybe for a husband, you know. But the things was not working out because I still had no much time to go out, you know. Mm -hmm. The only day I had free, it was Sunday. And this Sunday, I was dedicated to my daughter. Yeah. So the men, they were complaining that I have no time for them. I said, I'm sorry. I, what can I do? Then, you know, yeah. And finally, I decided to give up with the man and <laughs> just uh, continued concentrating on my career, on my daughter. Yeah, And uh, I was quite successful. It doesn't mean that I was completely alone. I had some, some boyfriends. I was going out, you know. We yeah. had fun times. Sometimes we were going to holidays. But I was alone at my home. Behind my, do behind my doors, I was yeah. closing my doors. And I was completely alone. So, Jalanta, it just made me laugh so much the first time we talked about this. Can you tell me actually about your rules for men? Because it just makes me howl with laughter. <laughs> you know, I used to to go to a lot of uh, kind of workshops for women, you know. Right. And as I was really concentrating and spending so many years on uh, psychology of relationship between men and women because I I thought if I will have another relationship I want to really improve I want to understand what I was doing wrong you know mm -hmm. how to build the relationship and um, so I decided to follow some rules in my life you know to not spend my energy for each man with whom I am go going out you know because you know how how ladies are doing they are scared to, to lose a man. They meet a man and they think, oh my God, he's nice. I like, I like him. I love him. Maybe it's the right, man, uh, the right one. And, you know, they start very quickly to go to the intimate relationship, you know. And I decided to not do like that because I wanted to be sure that I don't spend, I don't lose my energy and I, again for another one or for another one. Yeah. Because in my opinion, we need 
six months to recognize if the person is yours or no, you know. Right. So I decided to not have any sexual relation, any intimacy before six months. So I started to date, I started to go out, you know, and I was telling to men immediately from the first day, listen, all is okay, we can go out, but you have to know from the first day that I will we will not have any sexual relation first mm-hmm. six months. Mm-hmm. And of course their mouths they were opening, the <laughs> eyes they were, the eyes was going jumping out of their face, you know, and saying, How, how? Yes, it's easy. And I was so strong inside of me. I was not scared to say these words, you know. Yeah. And the men, they, they were feeling that, how, how secure I am telling this word. I'm not joking. And I don't have a, a feeling of fear that yeah. they run from me. I was ready even to wait if they run from me. Then I, it, it means it's even, it's even better when they run. It's, yeah. it's not your person at all, you know. Yeah. And, and, you know, but uh, the relationship was ending before six months. yes this was always ending before six months so I was really a little bit disappointed about men you know because I was improving myself and I was learning so much I was trying to improve my personality you know Mm -hmm. and I like to develop myself and I understood that people are not doing those things, you know. And it's very difficult to find a person in the same level who wants to improve, who wants to understand, who wants to learn, who wants to compromise in relationship, you know. Yeah. So finally, I decided that I will not look for any man. Mm-hmm. And I will stay with my daughter for another, let's say, five years. Because at that time, she was 12. And I decided that she's a teenager. And I don't want to have any relation now because my daughter in this age. Yeah. And in the meantime, in the meantime, happened a very, very bad thing. You know, the, my husband, my the, the father of my second daughter, he killed himself when she was 14. So we oh. had a very difficult time yes it was really big trauma and they said now for sure I can't have any relationship you know that would be absolutely too much and uh, many friends of mine they really were telling oh my god Yolanta how can you pass all those difficulties all those situations you are always alone you can't find a partner you know Mm -hmm. I said ladies I can't find a partner. It's not a problem. Mm. But I need a partner which I want. Yes. You know, and I wrote down what I want, which man I want, how he must be, what he must to do. And I really followed these rules. Mm-hmm. And you know, you know, Lindsay, it's so easy. I tell to every single woman. And also to my younger daughter, the older is already too old to, to listen. <laughs> <laughs> but when you have kind of list, what you know exactly, yeah. and you follow your wishes, and yeah. you, don't, you don't let yourself to lose from this list, it's so easy. You don't lose time for the wrong people, I swear. Yeah. And the most important thing we should not have fear. People, ladies, afraid that maybe I will let him to be a little bit, you know, I don't like, but let, let him be like that. And this is a big mistake because your man will come before or later. Mm-hmm. You must be patient. You must keep this wish list, what you want, yeah. and let yourself to, to fail, you know. And to yeah. be scared that the man will not come. He will come in the right moment. He will come in the right time. He will come at that time when you are ready. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Yes. Now I am 50, 53 and till 53, I I, I have now uh, someone whom I like, you know, and mm-hmm. quiet, really, he is really like I was <laughs> writing down. And, you know, and I don't know how things will go. But I am so free inside of me. I just letting go the things, you know. If it works, if it not works, if it not works, it means 
I have to go on and I have to work on myself. The, the right person will come, I'm sure, one day. Yeah. I'm not close for the relationship. I'm very open, you know. Fantastic. Now, you have created what certainly from the outside looks like a, a remarkable life for yourself. So can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing now? Because it's so inspirational. Now I can see my life is going on very intensely, very intensely. I work a lot. I creating my brand GM Control. I love I love this baby. How we see? Yeah, <laughs> it's my it's my baby. We are working on. I have now a really big team. I'm not working alone anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a big goals. I want to create uh, GM Control as a worldwide brand. You know, yeah. we are. I'm inspiring women to stay positive, to stay healthy in their fifties. I'm trying to show through my example that life is going on. Life can be hard, but in the meantime, it is beautiful if you learn how to deal with difficulties. You know, mm -hmm. if you learn how to deal with challenges how to calm yourself down it is all all those things is uh, possible to achieve step by step of course not in one day so the the in the moment i work a lot we are working with my team uh, creating those videos creating those uh, reels and and mm -hmm. traveling a lot and building my own business in my 50s, you know, it's a new thing as well. So this is a wonderful encourage thing because I could never imagine. It was a big, big dream of mine, you know, Lindsay, really? for, for seven years, I think. Wow. So when I, did you start JM Control? JM Control started exactly three years ago, 2021 January. Wow. Yes, exactly three years ago. And I had this dream long time ago, but I never, I I never knew how it will come out, you know, because I never knew how to do the things. I am not, I am not a business. I was not a business woman, yeah. <laughs> but I learned everything now. I I always dreamed to have something my own, you know, that I create something my own. I can bring to the world something my own. But I never knew how to do that. But the life plays the things in such a way that it came out alone, you know, without even thinking. I so just how did, how did it happen? Because the videos you make, I mean, they're all fitness videos, um, but in amazing locations. Um, and you run retreats. And I mean, just incredible. You have an enormous following on Instagram. So how did you grow that? Just because it sounds so humble. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you so much. When people ask me this question, uh, and yesterday I had a conversation with very nice ladies here in Vienna, and people and ladies ask me, how did you grow? How did you grow? I, I really don't know how to, to answer to this question. I think the main thing what I was doing, I never thought how to grow. <laughs> the main thing, the main Stop thing that. what I wanted to spread to the world, to the ladies, is to give something useful for them. Mm -hmm. I never thought about money. I never thought about how to grow. But, you know, I just was giving the information, the knowledge, what I knew. And there is a good saying, give to people those things what you love most and what you can do best you know mm -hmm. so I just was sharing my uh, personal experience my personal life for ladies over 50 and it it went so so fast up it was wow. growing up so fast everything organic you know we didn't do anything many people think that I was buying followers no I swear it's not my way to do because I just want to be honest you know to people and yeah. just giving them things what I am doing what I know and with the time we grew up and then the work was uh, going on and I had more and more and more work and then in some point we decided to switch to professional 
you know, we decided okay. to to grow up the GM control in a professional way. And then it came even much, much more work, you know. <laughs> wow. But, you know, I I always had a dream in my head, mm-hmm. in my heart. Yeah. And this dream just was coming true. Ladies, I really, I swear, I don't know how it happened. Again, I have to repeat the same word. I wanted so much. I had no money, I swear. I had very minimal money. But my wish was so big to develop GM control that the doors they were opening alone. Wow. They were putting me in such a cir- circumstances that, you know, I could spend four months in Thailand. I could travel in these locations. You know, there is a wonderful thing. Big dream. Don't be afraid of dreams. They become true. Just dream. Send your wishes to universe and don't think how it will happen. But these things, they always happen, you know. And today I am where I am. I don't know. I continued working. I continued creating. I didn't arrive yet to the point where I want to be. It mm-hmm. will come later. You know, I still have a big, big <laughs> yeah. dreams to do to become true. But I believe it will come one day. That's amazing. Because, I mean, you already have a worldwide following, don't you? Yes, it's we have worldwide. We have so many women following gym control from around the world. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. When I read sometimes uh, comments from which countries they are, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So what sort of um, what sort of things are you doing now? What sort of things are you offering? Um, right now I am oh, right now I am offering my workout programs. I have a subscription platform for ladies over 50 meal plans. Yes, this is the products what I have for now. But we are de- developing a new e-shop and it comes very soon. Uh, in May, I think we are developing a completely new website and everything. And we're going to offer much, much more. We're going to offer many different workouts. We're going to op- offering some products to ladies. Mm-hmm. Maybe even some clothing. All will be step by step, you know. But this is the way I am going. I am moving forward. Now I have a big team. We are working five people. We mm-hmm. were starting two people, but slowly, slowly we are growing up. Because if you want to move forward, you need professional people. You need help. You cannot be successful alone all the time. It is not possible. Mm-hmm. Note to self. <laughs> Yes. Thank you for that advice. That's very helpful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Lindsay. I think, you know, in the life is very simple. Just it is very important to love what you do mm-hmm. and do what you love. That's the rule I was following all my life. And I was not successful immediately, you know, but I knew one thing. I knew one thing that I want to do this, what I am doing. And many, many people, many members of my family, they were laughing from me. I swear, they were telling, you are completely a little bit stupid. What are you doing? Who can be interesting in what you are doing? You know, the thing is, I never, never listened to no one. No one. I had my way. And nobody could take me away from my way, from my dream. I always saw there somewhere the point where I want to be. And Mm -hmm. I'm moving direction to this, to my dream, you know. Mm -hmm. And if you are really, really strong in that, what you want, nobody can imbalance you and say, oh, no, don't do this. And you are scared. Oh, yeah, maybe I don't. I should not do that. Never happened to me this. Mm -hmm. No, I love what I do. Sorry, I was going to say, so, I mean, is there anybody in particular who inspires you? Difficult question, you know, Lindsay. More successful you are, less people you have around you. This is the truth of success, I swear. Okay. And that I felt slowly, slowly from the beginning of jam control. And uh, I feel how slowly people are going away from me, my friends. I lost some friends, you know, just because. Really? Yes, it's true. When you become successful, you will lose some people who really 
were important for you. I don't know why. I really don't know why because all what I achieved, I achieved just by working. Mm -hmm. Nobody brought me anything and nobody gave it me anything. Absolutely. I really did everything by my work, hard work, you know, and I am very happy where I am today. But who is motivating me? You know, sometimes I also look to some ladies who have shifted a lot. Yeah. They are very, very big motivators for me. Yeah. A little bit older ladies, 60s and 70s, you know. My daughters, they are uh, also helping me. Sometimes they are criticizing me. <laughs> yeah, that's what daughters do. Well, all kids, yes, yes. they'll be at first to criticize, but they want you to succeed. Yes, they want you to be really perfect, really good, you know. And this is a good kick for me, you know, <laughs> to improve, improve the things. But as I am an optimistic person, you know, mm -hmm. I see the life, let's say, with in nice colors. So I love the life. I love what I do. And this is a big motivation for me to get up every morning just to know that another day came out. And I'm happy for that. Yeah. And uh, if you are happy with yourself, if you are able to motivate yourself, not waiting from somebody else, you know, you will never be disappointed about anything because you can control your life. You can take the things in your life and you can decide how your day will be. Today, I want to be the best day whatever I had in my life and move forward. Yeah, absolutely. So how can people find out more about you? People can find me in all social media, GM Control, Instagram, YouTube, my website, Facebook as well. So okay. if they put my name, GM Control, it will come out. Yeah, all the links and also all the links will be in the show notes so people can look you up. Cool. All the links they will, they will find out, yes. Yeah, absolutely. So if you could. Um, share almost like a, a parting note or a parting piece of advice for maybe somebody who's looking to achieve a goal or who has a big dream what would your advice be to them i would advise to ladies or to people in general first of all to never give up never never give up and everything is achieve achievable we are very very strong People, humans are very strong. We have such a strong power inside of us. Mm. And we have to know, and everyone has to know, that life is very difficult. Life will bring us up and down, you know, to the side, to the order. We're going to fail. But it is important to stand up again and go. You're going to fail again. Stand up and go. You're going to fail a third time, fourth time, and fifth time. After the fifth time, maybe you're gonna not fail anymore, <laughs> but you will have you will have all the challenge. So you keep you have to keep going. You have to keep going, even if sometimes things the day is dark and it's never never gonna change. It's not true. Keep going, keep going forward. Never never give up. This is the principles I follow. Fantastic. Oh, that's a lovely note to part on. Thank you for that, Jalanta. That's awesome. Thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. You too. I wish you all the best. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Um, just before you go, can I ask a favour? Could you possibly subscribe to the show and leave a review if you really enjoyed it? Those things are absolutely the lifeblood of the show. They allow the show then to get a bit more publicity and get sent out to other people. So I'd love it if you could be a part of growing this podcast and sharing the Magical Midlife message. Now, also, we've got a new feature down in the show notes, which is an online store which now supports everything to do with Magical Midlife. There are personal and business resources on there for you. So please go and check it out. As I say, it's right down at the bottom in the show notes. There's free downloads. There's paid for downloads. There is physical books and there's even links for coaching and business training as well. OK, so thanks so much for being a part of the Magical Midlife. And I can't wait to catch up with you in the next episode. Take care.